let's face it, we're all a little weird. Most of us are a bunch of grown ass adults that collect little toy marbles. That is freaking weird. Hello, my name is Stephen Barr and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we tag along with Ron Shepard as we explore the Ravenswood Novelty Marbles line of packaging and maybe a few more Ravenswood Marbles tips. Stay tuned. Yes, the um, top, top one is some of the packaging. There's quite a bit of it. Of course, the mesh bags are the hardest to find. And you can date a mesh bag by the number of threads per square inch. As you can see, this one is a lot tighter uh -huh. than this one. So this bag is much older. You can tell by the header. So that's one of the way you can date mesh bags is by the, the square tight, inch. The more tightly knit bag is an older, older bag. Yes. So what would, what would be the date on something like that red These bag? are in the 30s to the early 40s. Uh -huh. And this type mesh, a little bigger hole, we're into the 40s up to the 50s. Okay. Uh, and then after the mesh bags, you got in the plastic bags. Right. And one way people have a lot of trouble, there's a lot of fake bags out there from different companies. One sure way, 95% of the plastic bags, you see this side, if they're original and older, we'll have this melted seam right down the back. Got it. So yep. that is a... That's a vintage bag. That's a vintage bag, and that's... Yeah. The, they they and say that plastic rusted, is uh, uh, thicker, the... Right. Uh, and they say rusted staples, well, they put them in acid and everything, rust and this and that, oh, so you really can't give it in. And the computer printers nowadays will make this print exactly so, but this is a this is a fail-safe, is this melted seam. Gotcha. That's an original vintage bag when it's got that melted seam. Right. And they named a Buddy, and I believe the Buddy came from the owner's dog. That was his dog's name, was Buddy. <laughs> How about that? Uh, and there's the Buddy boxes. And they came in red print and blue print, right? Nope, they're all red. All red. The key to the boxes is okay. there's two different sizes. The side view, you can see the difference. And they say marbles. One's a lot larger than this. This is the older one, the smaller one, the thinner one. Okay. The front of them, if you look close, it's a little bit different. They say marbles, same stripe. One says buddy, the other one says marbles. <laughs> the large one says buddy, it's the later one, the oldest one. It says marbles, and it's the thinner. And they're a different count of the bigger yes, boxes? Yes, more? yes, definitely. Yeah. Now, these older boxes almost always have Ravenswoods in them. The larger boxes, you have to be careful because there was a large find in 87 Parkersburg with thousands of these empty boxes. And you will so find they're them, getting filled with it. You will find them with what? Marble Kings and everything in them. And the empty boxes are easy to find. Here's an empty, sure. but they look new. And you, you, in the bigger boxes, you have to know the marbles inside it, where the Ravens was or they can't be anything else. The thinner boxes are going to be Ravens Woods, unless somebody else backfilled, but hardly ever. The thin ones that says marbles, you got a uh -huh. much better chance of having actual Ravens Wood marbles. Uh, here's just some of the displays, and some of these boxes have some really nice marbles in them. Uh, yeah, they're, um, they're pretty... I nice. only have one or two Ravenswoods with ox bloods, and one of them came in this box right here. And you get to the next shelf. Uh, we've got the Trucker's Marble Coaster and the Automatic Crane. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thank you for the demo on those. This is a unique item. It's a Chinese checker set. And the box looks exactly like Vitra Agate, only it don't say Vitra Agate, but this one says Ravens with Novelty Works. These are pretty rare to come by. And if it has racks of Ravens with Marbles, this first row glows bright. So it'd be the right marble. They're the, UV reactive. This is hard, hard box to come by. All right. And here, you have, and here we have some related collectible Ravenswood literature. This first piece I got from David Chamberlain. This is the catalog they're using, probably from around 1954. And if you look closely, just like in Ron's collection, none of these headers on the bags that they're showing say the word Ravenswood Novelty. So that's kind of curious. But one trivia here, this is the sun and the nephew of the last owner, Paul Cox. So that's 
Charles Cox on the left and Lee Hudkins on the right. And that's a neat item. There, if I also recommend this book. This is the American Machine Made Marbles. This is the uh, Mike Johnson book. There's several pages covering Ravenswood here. And it's terrific reading. Also, there's some information on the Alley book with Ravenswood, which is here. This is uh, 2013. And this is another curious item here. This is sort of a science tech magazine. This is dated 1945. And there's an article on Ravenswood here. And they talk with the owner at the time, C.W. Turnbull. They break down the batch glass ingredients. So just wanted to show you that stuff. Also, while I've got the camera rolling, here's the spread of Ravenswood swirls. I've had, you've seen many of these in close-ups in some of the other videos, but I had redone the walls here, and so I got this new spread up. And here we have some blue ravens, some greens. This is a nice piece here. I don't know if you could see it, but it actually has a pink base on it. And it's very related to a, a red raven. And look at look at these white based pieces. Notice how deep and bold that blue those blue swirls are on it. Here's a few clear based examples. So that's my Ravenswood display and I also wanted to sort of show this, these O-rings that I'm using now. I had been using washers for so long and th these O-rings are great. You can get these at uh, Granger or Home Depot, Lowe's. These will cradle the mar marble perfectly and protect them from whatever surface that they're on. The dimensions are, the inside dimension is 5 16 and the outside is 7 16 for the ones that I prefer. That would be an eighth of an inch thick. They also make them thinner. Here's one that is a sixteenth of an inch thick. So it's a half inch OD. They'll make them in red and black. These are really good for holding your marble. It's a great tool. Here's some... Um, and here's what they look like retail. So just so you, you can see. So there we have those. And that is that. <laughs> and back to Ron. And if you want to zoom back to the top shelf, it's hard to see, but in hand, you'll notice a little glass bottle in here. Okay. It has two marbles in it. It is clear. It's in this display case. Yeah. These were found at the river. And over the years, and down over the riverbank, and through the concrete, and this and that, these still survived with marbles in them and sand in them. How about that? And they are so thin, you can flip it with your fingernail and break it. Holy cow. Uh, these were not originally made for the marbles. These were made for put other small trinkets and nuts and little bolts in and everything else. They never did have a lid. They were made in Vienna, West Virginia. Uh, another man that run the machine that made them up there. So why did Ravenswood end up with? They were using these for their clear collet. And then they decided, well, they had them left over. What they had left over, they put the marbles in them. The only and, place, and sell them? The only place I knew they were sold was in the Ravenswood dime store with two marbles in them. And the rest of them all was their clear glass for the marbles. Uh-huh. But they are, this one's cracked. It's a wonder I didn't break that one. They were just so fragile, so, so thin and so right. fragile. How about that? So that's unique to Ravenswood alone. Yeah. And and to to have them in the bottle, nine sixteenths is all fit in it. Again, that's small right. size. Yeah. Uh, you know, you had to get them off the river bank, or you bought them in the dime mm -hmm. store at Ravenswood. Amazing. So that's the story on those. 
And there's some bunion bag. Uh, yeah, ba bunion Paul, bag. Paul Bunion. And you'll notice the different headers. This is the older header. It's just like a paper. Uh -huh. It's a faded red and letters buddy. And this is the next style header they had too. And then they moved up to this style header here with the heavier stock. Uh, this around the, the outline. Oh, I see. So you can date some of the marbles by the headers you're coming around left or right. This one, this one, and then this one. Huh. Thank you, Ron. That's good to know. So we have another shelf. We have another Got one more to go. All right. And there's a package over here. Edwin Safer Ed Edwin Safried. Mm -hmm. was the main man at Ravenswood after Allie left, and he was there until he probably locked the doors the very last time. These are the marbles that we talked about earlier that I got from Faye Safery to his daughter. These were Edwin Safery's part of his collection out of those pickle jars. That, I was allowed to buy four of those the first time in Sistersville. Then I went to her house and bought the others later on. You can see the Paul Bunyans. You can see the three-quarter Ravens. Wow. And the, the Ravens are, there is the blue three-quarter. And the next thing in this case here is what we call the shoestring bag. We only I've know never a, seen one. We only know three <laughs> of these ever been found. Oh wow! It says genuine old fashioned marbles on tag, and it has the Paul Bunyans. It's Ravenswoods, and it's tied. Got holes in the bag with a thick string and use it for a shoestring. Huh. So it's red, red, white, and blue shoestrings. So we call it shoestring bag, and we know of three of them. Is all we know of. Uh, Nolan Morgan has Fabulous. one. I have this one, and Dale Simmons Parkersburg has one. That's all we know of. Wow. So you keep an eye out for the Ravenswood. Yeah. Don't say Ravenswood. It'll say genuine old fashioned marbles, but the shoestring's a giveaway. Thank you, Ron Shepard, for the Ravenswood tour and packaging tips. If you enjoyed this video, please check out some of my other content. Be well, and thank you for watching Vintage Machine Made Marbles.